This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. It's Tuesday, so we're doing a top five list, and this is one that I've been mulling over for a while, and quite coincidentally, it was suggested on uh, in the comments to I think it was the um, the iconic guitar amps influential guitar amps video I did a couple of weeks ago. I've done plenty of videos where I'm talking about um, you know iconic this or influential that you know kind of usually top end you know quite often boutique pieces of equipment. But what about the working musician, the person who is, you know, maybe a bricklayer or a milkman or a, you know, shelf stacker uh, Monday to Friday, but on, you know, on a weekend, they're a rock star at the local pub or working men's club or wherever. What equipment has really kept that part of the music business alive and kicking and, you know, provided good value and faithful workhorse equipment to the, to the semi-pro or amateur musician? Well, we're going to find out today. These are just my opinions, and I've decided to structure this a little bit like an award show, but without the pontificating celebrities. There are various categories, and we'll kick things off with... The Electric Guitar. Yes, the award for the Loyal Workhorse Guitar. The guitar which um, you will often see... Uh, fronting a pub rock band or a functions band or playing in the working men's clubs or, you know, at a wedding band or something like that. I did think of a few different guitars for this category. Um, I mentioned in a video a few weeks ago that I think the Yamaha Pacifica 112 revolutionized the budget guitar industry. Uh, until 1993, if you were buying a £200 electric guitar, it was going to be made of plywood. And then suddenly the Pacifica 112 comes along and it's not acceptable to make electric guitars at any price point, it seems, after that out of plywood. So that was a strong contender. But if there's one guitar I think that absolutely is streets ahead in this category, it's this one. I'm going to call it the entry-level Fender Stratocaster. Now this is a made-in-Mexico standard Stratocaster. Um... My entry-level Fender Stratocaster was the one that sort of preceded this and was there was a little bit of overlap. I had the uh, Made in Japan 60s reissue Strat, which was a loyal and faithful workhorse for me on the uh, gigging circuit for many a year. You often saw these, I had EMG pickups in mind, but you often saw these with um, hot rails humbuckers stuffed in the back end and, you know, playing all kinds of top 40 country, blues, metal, rock, you know, anything. They were a guitar for all seasons. And if there's one guitar that really did, um, you know, kind of power the uh, the grassroots music industry, certainly in this part of the world, uh, for a long, long time. It was the entry-level Fender Stratocaster. So there you go. There's the award for the Loyal Workhorse Guitar, the entry-level Fender Stratocaster. Next. The Electric Guitar Amplifier. So what is an electric guitar without an amplifier? I'll tell you what it is very quiet so there has to be uh, an award for the workhorse amplifier that's powered the grassroots uh, music scene and um if it were down to me which i suppose it is but um you know if i was choosing my personal choice then the award would go to the marshall valve state 8080 combo um it sounded absolutely fantastic gave you marshall tone on a budget and you know Unusually for a Marshall amp, it was surprisingly reliable. Great, great valvey Marshall tone, reliable, budget friendly, and you know, you could look when you're on stage, you could look behind you and you could see that, that black Tolex covering and the white scripted Marshall and you think, yeah, I'm one of the, I'm one of the big boys now. Um, but that's not the amp that's going to win the award. The, the award must surely go to the venerable PV Bandit. I have played through countless versions of this amplifier. I think this is the latest one here. Um, you know, fantastic sounding amp, 
bulletproof reliability, you know, as my mate Steve Hoggett says, it's PV, so it'll work underwater. Tell you a true story. Um, back in about 2009, the band I was in then, it was like a 70s kind of tribute rock band. Um, we were called the Sweeney. And uh, we were rehearsing in a local rehearsal place that had like four or five different uh, rooms that bands could hire and come in and rehearse. And the singer in the band, who was also the, the other guitarist, was um, well compensated for his, his day job. And he had, uh, I think, a Marshall DSL head with a 2B12 cab and a Fender 50th anniversary uh, Stratocaster. And he had, you know, a pedal board the size of Hampshire um, on, the, on the floor. I had a PV Bandit. I had a vintage V6 Strat copy, a Dan Electro chorus pedal. Anyway, we were playing our songs, and um, the one of the guys from the band who was rehearsing next door, they were obviously out on a break. They came in and had a listen to us. And because of the rat's kind of nest of cables that were trailing around the floor, it wasn't clear who was plugged into what amp. And uh, he came up to me and said, you're getting a cracking tone out of that Marshall. I said, well, actually, I'm plugged into the PV. So that's a measure of the kind of tone that, you, that these things will deliver if you know how to dial them in. They're a fantastic little amp, and you will see these on stages in pubs. You'll see them on stages in working men's clubs, function bands, everywhere where you'll find a working guitarist. There's a strong chance you're going to find the PV Bandit. So that one had to get the award. Next. The acoustic guitar. Yeah, if you're playing in a covers band, whatever the genre, or maybe even an originals band, there's always going to come a time in the set where you say to the audience, we're going to slow things down a little bit for you now, and it's then it's time for the ballad or the acoustic number. I remember um, back in the early 90s on the circuit when I was uh, kind of playing loads and loads of gigs, um, it didn't matter whether it was a top 40 covers band. It didn't matter whether it was a country and Western band. It didn't matter whether it was a rock band. It didn't matter what it was. Inevitably, at some point, um, that uh, extreme ballad, you know, more than words would come out. And then later on, you know, pretty much every band was doing something from the Eric Clapton Unplugged album. And so it goes on. There's always one big acoustic hit that if you're in a covers band, you need to include in your set. Uh, it's probably some Ed Sheeran thing these days. And the guitar, which really did, I think, make a big mark on the circuit there was this one, the uh, Yamaha APX Electroacoustic. They came out in 1987, and again, Yamaha, a brand which is synonymous for great quality, good value, you know, kind of giving the working musician exactly what they need at a price they're going to like. I remember seeing uh, a Eurythmics gig um, on TV. Gosh, I can't remember when it was, mid-90s at some point. Dave Stewart was using one of these. Um, I saw a Jimmy Nail gig. Remember him? Um, you know, around about the Crocodile Shoes era of his career. And he was strumming away on one of these. So, you know, kind of rock stars, people who go out on tour, people who've got, you know, albums in uh, in your local branch of um, HMV, if such a thing still exists, um, all the way down to, you know, the, the working guitarist in, in the pub rock band, in the working men's club band, in the functions band, in the wedding band, in, you know, whatever. Just uh, people playing on the grassroots music uh, scene, they were using these guitars as well. And for that reason, you know, I think this one has to get the award for the Workhorse Electroacoustic. Next. The Effects Unit. If you're playing in a covers band, then you're going to need a lot of different sounds at your disposal. The guitar tone you're going to use for that Brian May solo is probably quite markedly different from the tone you want for that Kings of Leon tune, or that Green Day tune, or maybe there's a Dire Straits tune later on in the set, and you need different guitar sounds for these. Now, of course, you'll have a an amp that's probably got clean and dirty channels on it, you know, so you can channel switch between the amps, but sometimes, quite often, in fact, you need more flexibility than that. And... 
Uh, back in the day, that used to mean you had a bunch of different pedals on the floor, and there was quite often a tap dancing routine where you were turning three or four pedals on and another three or four off, or different, or bending down to tweak parameters on a pedal, and so on and so forth. Just all in that split second from you kind of finishing the chords for the second chorus of the song and then going into the solo. And then as as we moved into the 90s, companies like Korg and Boss started offering programmable multi-effects units where you could do it all with just one tap of a foot switch. But they were still quite pricey, by and large. And then a new player entered the market with a, an effects unit that um, was bizarrely meant to clip onto your guitar strap. I'm talking, of course, about Zoom. Do you remember that um, guitar strap? kind of effects unit i don't think i ever saw anybody with it there it always used to reside usually tucked under the kind of um carry handle strap kind of thing on top of your amp but nevertheless uh it was a programmable effects unit it sounded good and it was affordable and pretty much their follow-up to that was one of these the zoom 505 programmable multi-effects unit now if you look at the specs for one of these these days you know it's uh, it is a bit prehistoric would you want to go into a studio and record with one of these probably not but in a live situation you know where you're just kind of paying the mortgage or paying for your beer money or whatever they were a great little unit you know and they offered the flexibility of a, a multitude of different tones that took away that sort of tap dancing kind of um turn your chorus off turn your delay on turn the overdrive off turn the compression off and and then do it all again in reverse when you come out at the end of your solo you could do it all just with one tap of the foot switch as i said i still see them being used these days you can pick these up for peanuts on um on ebay nowadays 30 40 quid and it's just not worth not having one and i haven't got one at the moment i must i must kind of go and grab one and, and do some sort of um you know kind of is it as good as i remember type review on it but yeah for the the, the award for the workhorse multi-effects unit the one that democratized uh programmable multi-effects for the grassroots musician i think this one yeah, I think this one deserves the award, the Zoom 505. Next. The accessory. Yeah, the category for the most useful accessory. Now, at first, I was going to think about, um, you know, uh, a ch something to keep your guitars in tune, something to get your guitars in tune. I remember seeing, uh, there was, used to be a show on the BBC in the UK called Tomorrow's World, and it was a, a program all about um, fantastic new inventions that were going to revolutionise life. Apparently, according to that show back in the late 70s, we were all going to be kind of commuting to work on jetpacks by now. Yeah, how did that work out? Anyway, um, on that show, there was um, this new invention, uh, which was um, a tuning device for musical instruments. It could listen to the note that you were playing and tell you if it was in tune or not. and. Um, you know, the, the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, or one of the big orchestras in the UK, I can't remember which one, um, was organising a fundraising campaign so they could buy one to use between them. Indeed. Um, and nowadays you just use a free app on your phone. So I did think about, you know, kind of um, use it, giving the award to a tuner. But then it occurred to me there is one piece of equipment, one essential accessory that the entire music industry and probably a lot of other industries would grind to a halt if this were no longer available if you have a mic stand which refuses to stand if you have a bad connection on a cable and you need to join a pair of wires urgently or the gig will just kind of disintegrate if you have a, a drum stand where the um, or a cymbal stand where that keeps doing an impersonation of one of those oil well pumps you know just kind of drooping like you know the kind of things you see on american tv um you know and you need it fixing and you need it fixing quickly there is only one thing that can come to the rescue gaffer tape you know where would we be without it it is often known as the uh as the musician's swiss army knife the musician's toolkit and without it 
most music most musicians most bands would be uh, in pretty deep trouble you know at some point or other it fixes so many things if it can't be fixed with gaffer tape it probably can't be fixed <laughs> basically it's got me through to the end of many a gig when some piece of equipment has failed or something just isn't working as it should you know you kind of lash it up with a bit of this stuff and it'll uh, it'll allow you to limp home and um, you know kind of get the gig finished so the award for the workhorse accessory simply has to go to gaffer tape and there you have it those are my awards for the five most essential pieces of equipment for the uh, working musician workhorse gear basically let me know if you agree let me know if you disagree my uh, my opinions here are just my opinions based upon what i've seen in my experience as a gigging musician and what i've seen you know on stages and in pubs and clubs in this part of the world um, just going and seeing bands and playing in bands let me know if you have um, if you have different opinions and um, put them down in the comments section and there you go folks that is the video for today hope you found it uh, reasonably entertaining and if that's the case please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not give me a like while you're at it don't forget as always the live stream every friday 5 p.m uk time where we drink beer and talk music and guitars what's not to like about that cracking way to kick off the weekend and i'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now